So let's look at this plot over here. Um, this is some data that I synthetically generated using code. And so we've got X on the X axis. So we've got age on the X axis. And we have glomerular filtration rate on the Y axis, which is a measure of your kidney function where higher is better, lower is worse. And I want to ask, is this result statistically significant? And looking at the points and looking at the best line fit, it looks like as your age goes up, your glomerular filtration rate goes down. So it certainly looks like these results could be statistically significant. Okay. I told you the data was synthetically generated. So why is that important? Well, what if I told you I had actually done 99 other statistical tests comparing age and 99 other variables before I compared age to uh, glomerular filtration rate? So this is actually the code I used to generate this data um, and pretend that I was age and um, glomerular filtration rate. But really, this is just a bunch of random numbers. And when I do 100 statistical tests on a series of random numbers, and I sort them from lowest to highest p-value, I get about five tests that have a p-value of less than or very close to 0.05. So the takeaway from this is that if you do enough tests, you will find statistically significant relationships. And more specifically, if you test 100 relationships on random variables and you set a p-value threshold of 5% for statistical significance, you will find five quote unquote positive findings for every 100 tests that you do, even if there is no true relationship, simply by chance alone. So remember what a p-value is. A p-value is the probability of an observed finding or something more extreme under the null hypothesis. So if you do 100 tests on random numbers, you'll find five that have a p-value of approximately 5% or less. There are multiple ways to deal with the situation. One of the most common ways we deal with this is to not do you know, hundreds of statistical tests given a data set simply because we're gonna find things uh, that are significant that may not actually be true. But one way to correct for this is called the Bonferroni correction. And it's a pretty simple correction. If you do 100 tests, multiply your p-value by the number of tests that you did. So if your p-value was 0.1, but you did 10 tests, your p-value basically now becomes one. And so the, num the more tests you do, your p-value has to be lower and lower for it to have, you know, um, for you to reject your null hypothesis. So this is referred to as the Bonferroni correction. And one way to implement this is to use the p.adjust function. If this code is code that basically looks completely uninterpretable to you, that's okay. I won't expect you to do any code like this. This is just a simulation that I'm using to illustrate a point. But if I had taken those original p-values from a couple slides ago, where five of those values were very close to 0.05, or lower, and one was actually extremely low, it was like 0 0.003. Once I've multiplied those by 100, even that 0 0.003 becomes 0 0.3. And all of my findings lose their statistical significance based on that Bonferroni correction. So this is one way of dealing with this um, phenomenon of multiple hypothesis testing. An even better way is to try to avoid doing multiple hypothesis testing um, and to kind of have carefully uh, design hypotheses that have supportive evidence that are based on theory so that you're not just testing every single relationship in your data set.